Hello everyone. A friend of mine asked me if I would uh, put just a short video together to show my settings on my Olympus OM-D. Um, here's the camera. I'll show uh, what I typically uh, carry and some of the accessories and then just a little bit about uh, how I typically uh, keep the settings on the camera. So currently I have three lenses for my Olympus OM-D. Uh, the first is the uh, stock lens, as you can see here. This is the Olympus uh, 12 by 50 millimeter, or in uh, 35 millimeter format, that would be a 24 to 100 millimeter. It's a very nice lens. Uh, it is weatherproof. It also can shoot uh, macro. Um, typically, I'm utilizing it when uh, I'm at a place such as a zoo, at the zoo in which I know um, I need a, a zoom lens. Um, works really not nice. Uh, I guess the the downside is is that you do have to be in a well-lighted uh, um, area to be able to shoot, especially at low ISOs. Um, otherwise, you're going to likely need a uh, flash. The second lens I have here is the uh, Panasonic uh, Lumix G Vario 7 to 14 millimeter. Uh, this is a very, very nice lens that shoots at f4. Um, so, you know, it's the equivalent of a 14 by, uh, what, 28 millimeter, um, 35 millimeter format lens. Um, shoots very, very nice. Um, the distortion is very, very low uh, with this lens. Um, I've shot some HDR, some landscape with it, and I've been very, very happy with it so far. Uh, third and last lens is the uh, Panasonic uh, Lumix 25mm uh, Summilux lens. Uh, thus, it has uh, uh, you know the Leica branding, uh, which uh, I think is more of just you know the branding than it is actually being uh, made by Leica. Um, again, it shoots at f1.4. It's the equivalent of a 50mm, a 35mm format lens. Uh, very, very nice. I have uh, not had any pictures uploaded yet onto my website, um, but I do like it. Uh, Steve Huff highly recommends it. I've seen some other websites also uh, recommend this lens. Um, each of these lenses, um, you can find some uh, reviews on other websites. I know Steve on Steve Huff. Uh, photo.com talks specifically about the kit lens here and how he likes it and how some others like it and I have to agree it is a very very nice lens. So under the camera I typically use the Adamke uh, uh, camera strap that you can uh, see here. Uh, I don't u typically ever use the, um, the straps that come with the camera. So we'll kind of move that out of the way here for a second. You can see I have the uh, 25 millimeter Summilux on the lens right now. So here on the top, um, typically I keep this under ap aperture priority. As you can look over here, you've got aperture, shutter, uh, the program mode, uh, manual, and then some others. Uh, I never use any, any of the type of art um, settings or anything like that. So typically it's kept on aperture, maybe um, uh, P or priority mode. Um, every once in a while on uh, shutter priority. Very rarely do I do manual. Uh, maybe if I'm shooting HDR, I'll do that sometimes. Uh, on the other side, you have your uh, recorder. You have the, the F2, uh, function F2 key. I do use that as a, a manual button, so you click on it, and then it allows me to manually focus the camera. So on the back of the screen, um, you can see the different uh, uh, buttons here. Fortunately, is not zooming in very well right now, or focusing, but um, let's turn the camera back on. So typically, I have my screen set up to where I can actually see the majority of the things that are actually going on kind of behind the scenes. So let me get it set up here. Some people don't like having all the different settings on the camera screen. I kind of prefer it. I like being able to look off to the side and see exactly what settings I have so I know that, I, that everything is set correctly. Um, so here's how I typically set things. If I go into the, uh, um, excuse me, go into the menu. Um, typically, you know, I have my um, focus on uh, face and eye pro priority. That works very well. When taking pictures of people and portraits, move that back here. 
and then uh, audio I don't mess with. I usually keep my ISO on auto unless I'm shooting HDR and then I typically will, will lock it down at 200. Um, so other settings My autofocus, I keep, keep, typically keep it on a single autofocus. You can set it to continuous, or um, you can see there's other settings there. Uh, my uh, exposure metering, uh, you can keep it on evaluative like I do here, or you know center weighted or spot. Uh, typically on this, I usually keep it at uh, evaluative or uh, center weighted. Uh, my exposure, I guess this is probably one of the critical things. I always keep my exposure usually at a negative 3 to a negative 1. Um, and I do this in almost any type of lighting. I just I think it makes the picture set uh, appear a little more contrasty. That's personally what I like. Um, I do keep in full HD mode if I'm going to shoot video. This does shoot wonderful video. Always shoot in RAW allows for a, a better fine tuning uh, while post processing, which is part of one of my favorite parts of uh, messing with pictures or, or uh, taking pictures. Uh, sequential uh, shooting, either I keep it usually in single or in sequential low. Uh, sequential high, you can shoot as many as 10 uh, frames per second. I will do that occasionally. Probably do it more as my little girl gets a little bit uh, larger. And then uh, they do have these different modes of um, allowing for different types of tones. Um, I believe that Steve Hoff um, mentions that he keeps his either on nat natural or has it maybe on a uh, on muted, but I've just kept it on vivid. I like my pictures being a little more uh, saturated, and uh, so far I've I've really really liked it. The image stabilization you can either turn it off or you can set it to where it you know it stabilizes in in uh, different uh, planes or either just in a vertical or horizontal plane. Typically, you just leave it in IS one, which allows for um, image stabilization in all planes. Uh, again, it works very, very well on this camera. It's also what makes it a very good video camera. Other than that, I think we've got about everything. So I guess to kind of rehash things, um, typically on this camera, I keep it, again, at aperture, priority. Uh, I set my ISO to auto. Um, usually it's, it's on a single continuous autofocus. Um, on the back of the screen, I do like being able to see the, the info, as you can see here. And then also, you know, this is a touch screen, so you can set in different ways to where it can just focus by, by touching the screen, as you can see here. You can also set it to where it, it doesn't focus at all if you touch it. And you can also set it to where it actually takes a picture uh, when you, when you uh, press on the screen, as you can see there. Um, the other really nice thing is when you go back and, and you want to view pictures, it kind of works just like an iPhone or even like an Android phone where you can kind of slide through um, your pictures here, which I like. You can even uh, uh, double click on them to zoom in and then come off to the side and zoom out and zoom in and so forth. So that's really what I think one of the unique features of this camera in comparison to the NEX, uh, or Sony NEX7 that I have. Uh, screen does come out as you can see here. Again, there's other uh, micro four thirds and, and uh, smaller mirrorless cameras that can do that. So hopefully you enjoy this. Thanks.